At the moment, in the AI world, it's all about the deepness. The deepness of stuff. Now, SciSpace have got something deep, particularly for researchers. All right then, if you head over to SciSpace, this is what it looks like at the moment. They've just added this button here, Deep Review, and it's an awesome addition to your academic toolkit. So let's check it out. Now they've got some big claims, these SciSpace people. They're saying that on a benchmark study, SciSpace is 10 times better. Let's have a look to see what they mean. Essentially, what they mean is that ChatGPT looks at the world when you're asking it to do deep research. Here they're doing a deep review and they're asking it to only look in academic sources. Now, that means it's more suitable for people like me, people like you, academics. So here we can see that uh, in a comparative study, now, first of all, SciSpace, label your axes, mate. C minus for this one, um, but essentially what this one is telling you is that uh, SciSpace finds more relevant papers. So if it asks to look at the top five, top 10, and top 20 papers, OpenAI Deep Research only finds uh, sort of like two to, what's that, three papers, whereas SciSpace Deep Review finds uh, up to eight in the top 20 research. I think that's what it's. Meanwhile. Oh. That was the postman. His name's Andrew too. And he's bought me something to fix my overlocker machine for when I sew t-shirts. That's good, isn't it? All right then, but you can see that SciSpace Deep Review actually finds much more uh, information about your topic from the academic literature. Yes, love that. So uh, it also does it quicker. Once again, C minus, label your axes. And here we can see OpenAI Deep Research takes about five minutes, whereas SciSpace Deep Review takes only two minutes. So there's less waiting around, no one likes waiting around, especially in the AI world. So let's see what it actually does. All right, then when you first log in, you get this, you've got standard high quality and deep review. We want deep review because that's what this video is all about. But let's enter a search query. Let's go down here and let's say, why are aging COVID patients more susceptible to severe complications? Let's have a look at that. We click, we click, oh, we didn't need to click go. Here you can see this is something we're familiar with, with OpenAI, which is it asks clarifying questions, which is so great at then sort of like finding the actual things you need to research on. So here it says, are there any specific specific age groups, and then would you like to explore different blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to say no to that. I'm just going to be like, no. <laughs> No, deal with that. And then uh, this is a bit where you're like, okay, what do I got to do here? It's not obvious immediately, but essentially you get an enhanced query. Is it this what I actually want to search for? So, you know, I asked this, it's saying, actually, do you want to search for this? I've made it a bit better for you. And you're like, yeah, all right, let's do that. And you click submit now and it goes away and it does all the stuff for you. So you can see here that uh, it goes stepwise through everything. We've got executing multiple relevant queries, then finding relevant papers, and you can sit here and watch it think if you want, or you can just go to the tea room and have a gossip about that person that smells in your office. Or um, you can actually just uh, you know skip all that and go to one that I've done for you previously. So this is something I've been worried about recently as an aging gentleman nearing 40, is uh, what are the physiological and psychological benefits of different different sex positions for couples. I don't know. You tell me, size space. So here you can see, this is the research steps. If you click here, um, you get all of the stuff that it thought, that it found, that it did. You can see you can expand things. It found 68 top papers, show more. These are all of the 68 papers that it found. But here's the sort of like interesting bit. If we collapse this, it found 1,750 papers, but it found 68 papers relevant to your query. And it's easy then to grab those papers, plonk them in your research manager. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then you've got a basis for your research. Absolutely love that. Something that would have taken you hours, if not days, if not weeks, if you were prone to procrastination. Um, so here we have psychological benefits. And here it says all of the answers from the top 20 papers. And you can select the top five papers, 10 papers or 20 papers. But this is the sort of like little uh, nut, little gem that you need to take from all of its work. So physiological benefits and psychological benefits, here it is, all laid out. If you click on the reference, it will take you to the reference. And as you can see, all the way down the bottom here, we've got all of the papers. Here it's found 40 uh, papers, or initially it would say 20, and then what you've got to do is go all the way down to the bottom, bottom, and you can say load more papers, it will load 20 more. So now you can see you've got 60 papers, and uh, yeah, you don't need to just use them in this interface, but one thing I love about SciSpace and the way it sort of like deals with papers is this column. We can create a new column, and then we can add, I don't know, let's have a look, methods used. We can 
can put that one in there, you get a new column, it will go through all these papers and find the methods used. Absolutely love that, you can sort by different, and this is the most important thing if you're using this for further study, is you can click export, and then you can go to any of these sort of like files and send it across to CSV, Excel, BibTeX, XML, and RIS. So pretty much into any resource manager or reference manager that you're using. Oh, I need to swallow then. Okay, good. So the question is, what's next? Well, I think this is an amazing start on something that is incredibly useful and time consuming normally for researchers. But what do we do with this? One thing I'd love to see next is if you scroll all the way down to the bottom and this user interface just needs, I think, a little bit of a polishing because you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom and then you find this and you're like, okay, what do I actually want to do next? Uh, well, I don't want to do a related question, but I want to use what I just found in something else next. And so here I should be able to go like, create a notebook or chat with the top five papers. But really, I want to create a notebook and I want to start working with these references somewhere else. Ideally, if you paid for SciSpace, in the SciSpace uh, spot. But, you know, it doesn't sort of lead on, it's just a blank notebook. So I'd love to see that next. That way they're sort of dealing with the finding, the writing, then other like submission tools maybe in the future. Oh, I'm getting excited. This is like, a AI that can help you with all of the different aspects in my mind at the moment, but I'd love to see them sort of like do something like that next. Um, and there's something else you should know about uh, SciSpace that they're releasing soon, and I think it's very interesting and something maybe you should be using or going to use if, anyway, that you should use once they release it. Anyway. Let's go to the next section. One thing I think you should consider signing up for is this waitlist, which is SciSpace Browser Control. Our new agentic AI browses scientific repositories to find the research papers you need. Okay, so this is about um, using your browser to find all of the different things across many different repositories using AI. I think it's going to be a super powerful tool, but sign up for the waitlist because when it's released, you'll be first to uh, get notified and use it. They can apparently sort of like send it out at the moment because there's so many weird rules across different uh, publishers about using AI to, to scrape their content and then find stuff. So apparently once that all gets solved, um, this will go live and uh, I'll, yeah, I've looked at the video and uh, I think it's going to be very cool. But sign up for this wait list and uh, you'll be first to know and give it a trial run. I'd love to know what you think. All right, then there's another research AI tool that's going deep into research for you. Go check it out. And also, if you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about the top 25 AI tools that you should use for academia research. I think you'll love it. Go check it out.